good afternoon and good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Emmanuel, and I'm from Lagos, Nigeria, and I'm happy to be introducing the facilitator for this session this evening. It's been an amazing ride so far, and um, we have with us again our distinguished um, speaker who is going to be taking us in tonight's session. I'm going to be introducing him quickly so that we can kick the ball rolling. And um, our facilitator for tonight is none other than Martin Fridzen. Martin Fridzen is an esports entrepreneur and thought leader who in 2015 founded one of Europe's biggest esports clubs, Sorby Esports. From 2017 to 2020, he spearheaded all his sports activities at DGI, a Danish sports organization, creating the framework and structure for over 200 sports clubs to start up esports activities. He is currently the head of esports at the Danish Federation for Company Sports. And this evening, he's going to be talking about the topic how to build, organize, and fund a grassroots esports organization, and which cognitive, social, and personal development youth can experience when becoming part of a local organization. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with me Martin Friesen as he takes us on tonight's session. Thank you. Thank you, Thomas Emmanuel, for introducing me. And um, hello, guys and uh, girls, I hope. Uh, my name is uh, Martin, as Emmanuel just said, and um, I'm going to run you through a lot of topics for the next hour, more or less. Um, so let's just begin. I'm sitting in, uh, in, in Denmark, uh, about an hour from our capital, Copenhagen. Um, privately, I live with my wife and we have two daughters. And the pandemic right now is, uh, is, uh, is, is tough for all of us up here. I hope everyone is, is safe and, uh, and happy wherever you guys are at. So let me just share my screen with you guys and, uh, and let's see how this is going. Right, so let me just get this up and running. So, so my name uh, is Martin Fritzen and, and I'm gonna run you through this slide deck. Um, so to begin with, I am full-time employee uh, at the Danish National Federation of Company Sports. Um, we work with co-workers and we work with students. We work with sports associations and we work with, with company sports clubs where we help them uh, develop and execute e-sport activities uh, on all different levels. Uh, we have a national league where colleagues and students can compete against each other like sports clubs as well. Um, and I think right now we have two or three, two or three thousand players in that league. Um, so I spend all my day uh, working with esports. Um, and let me just get this up so I can see the chat if anyone's okay. So, hey, I got Brian, I got Pierre, and I got Joshua on the chat. Hello, guys. Um, so I spent all, all my day working with esports and I'm gonna share my kind of my, my experiences with you guys um, today. A part of, uh, from just being with the, the National Federation of Company Sports, I have my own business um, where I do a lot of writing. Uh, I love writing books. Um, as you can see, um, in the next couple of slides, I, uh, I, I, I wrote a few books about esports. But today's topic uh, is, is kind of divided into two. First one is uh, how to build, organize, and fund a grassroots esport organization. And the second one is uh, which cognitive, social, and personal development youth can experience when becoming part of a local esport organization. Um, this is where my passion is actually is to help others to you know build and 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 fund and create their esport organization. Uh, I have experience in the grassroots, the sports for all, the amateur part of esports. Um, 
But as some of you might know, we have a few really good esports teams in Denmark as well. Uh, Astralis uh, is one of them. Um, that's not where my strength is. So I'm going to run you through the grassroots part of it. A little bit about me. I have a degree from a business school uh, in, in retail management. I um, I spend a lot of time. That's the next picture uh, with with the, with with the small tower, because um, I'm that old. So so when when the internet kind of came was born into the world, I had my one of my first jobs was to sell ads at the um, uh, at at at, a, at at an internet page called uh, UB. DK, it, it was a Danish version of the Yahoo back then. Um, and then I have a picture of Salt Lake City because I've been working with sales and business development for almost 20 years. But um, but this picture of Salt Lake City was kind of my one of my you know fun parts of life where I got hired by a, an American company called uh, Omniture. Uh, at that point, they got uh, bought up by Adobe. Um, but I work with Omniture and I visited a lot of cities all over the world, actually uh, uh, selling uh, Omniture software. Um, and um, that was that was a big experience in my life. Um, then there's a little bit, a little picture of me uh, doing a motivational speak or, or a lecture. Because uh, a part of my story is that I actually had a drug abuse problem for over twenty years. So, so uh, from I was thirteen to I was thirty-three, I spent a lot of time uh, using drugs and drinking too much alcohol. And in two thousand and ten, I I became clean and I started to write a lot of books and do a lot of talks about how to quit addictions. Um, it's not what this is about, but that's part of my story. And then there's me and there's a few books I published. Um, um, I have my experiences from the grassroots, the sports clubs in Denmark, where we uh, implemented esports. We offered gaming and esport activities for kids, for teenagers, for adults. So they could join a sports club and they could, you know, play football or they could play volleyball or basketball or they could, you know, play FIFA or Counter-Strike if that's what they wanted to do. Um, and I got hired into a national sports federation in Denmark and began to to set the framework with a and and we we, we built a strong team there and we set a framework on how sports clubs could work with esports and how 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 you could build an esport organization inside a sports club or inside a school or inside a social club or any other organization, more or less. Uh, and I wrote a few books about it, um, how to build that, and also how to find money. Um, and let me just, you know, let me just, let's see the next slide here. So let me just say, because I know that any one of you watching this, um, I'm just going to say, hey, Robert, hey, Brian, nice to see you in the chat. So any one of you watching this now or whenever it's on YouTube, if you're watching this, I understand that not every advice I give is going to be working for you, okay? You might sit in Nigeria, you might sit in the U.S. somewhere, you might sit in Belgium or any other place in the world. I understand that not everything I say works for everyone, um, but I strongly suggest that you reach out to me or to any other presenter that you see or any network uh, or any mentor um, to see how 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 you can form some of these information into be working for you, right? So in my experience, this is the next slide, right? So in, in my experience, um, I have been working with four types of ego esport organizations. The EDU stands for educational institutions, schools, boarding schools, colleges, high schools, universities, anywhere where you teach something, right? Um, you can put esports in there. Uh, I've I've experienced it in, in 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 three different levels. So I've seen schools, or let's just call them educational institutions. I've seen them work with esports as a sport, right? So they recruit really good players. They some of them are actually giving them a scholarship, or at least you know some type of amount of money to come play for their school. 
um, and they go to school. They they play Rocket League or Counter Strike or whatever they're playing, and they are they are treating esports as a sport. That's what I've seen. Nice to see you, Stephen, as well in the chat. Hello. The second part in 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 education is I've seen them use, and I've been part of building uh, esports as a recreational, more social part of the school. So that could be a gaming facilities. It could be an, an esport room where, or, 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 or a gaming room where you actually have computers there and you can go there and you can play, you know, just having fun, play any game you want with your friends or with your uh, co-students. Um, and not, not being part of anything, maybe not even being part of a tournament or anything, just play computer games because you love playing computer games, right? We see a lot of, we see a lot of girls here as well. Uh, and then we see the club um, in schools as well. So, so you that could be youth club. It could be just be uh, at the university. Um, but we see a club where we have to maybe be a member to maybe receive coaching or be part of a tournament or be part of a team or have a little bit more quality. You might not be the best. You might not be competing, you know, in 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 the top division or on or, or on you know the best tournaments or or with the best. But you might be in a club. So, so you, so you might be more motivated by winning than the recreational people. Um, that's what I've seen in at, at universities and edu educational uh, institutions. The next way to uh, to organize these sports I've seen in clubs. Uh, it could be sports clubs, could be youth clubs, could be social clubs in any way. Uh, Depends on where you are at in the country or in the world, um, what kind of clubs you have. In Denmark, we have a lot of sports clubs. We actually have a lot of clubs for anything. Like, like you know, if you like to walk, we will have a club for that. If you like to run, if you like to swim, if you like to climb, if you like to sit still, <clears throat> if you like to, you know, do yoga or anything else, we have a club for it. <laughs> Uh, and obviously, we also have clubs for esports, and I've seen that as well uh, throughout the world, uh, where you have uh, either sports clubs or youth clubs or or genuine esport clubs forming, where you uh, go there. Uh, you might play online, so it's an online club. You can have that, but you also might have facilities where you can actually go in there in in the esports center in the in the esport club, and you can you can uh, sit down with your team with a coach and play, become better, participate in tournaments, you know, do online tournaments or offline tournaments or internal tournaments. I'm just going to have a drink. It's just water. Uh, yeah, Robert sitting still. Yeah, I know. It sounds awesome. Um, <clears throat> but we have that. So sorry to say. Uh, but but um, yeah, in in clubs you can have esports as well. <coughs> Sorry. Then we have the uh, commercial part of it, right? So that's I get a lot of emails and and uh, and uh, and a lot of messages from people who wants to create a a um, yeah the sit still club. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Uh, I get a lot of messages from people who wants to create a, a business or they want to buy a Counter Strike team or they want to have you know, build an, an, an esports center in whatever part of the world they are. Um, and obviously that's possible. We have seen a lot of companies um, blossoming. Uh, I've also seen a lot of company not blossoming. Um, but let me get into that. But that's the commercial side of it, right? You, you find some players, <clears throat> they need salary or they need to win some prize pools somewhere uh you need some income somewhere to actually get this running um and i'll dive a little bit into that later uh and don't don't i mean uh yeah just uh, send your questions if you have any you can do that now you can um you can just uh contact me on linkedin or anywhere else i'm sure that's possible to find my name anywhere um and then the fourth way i see is the community way so it could be us here brian joshua robert steven and manuel um we can we we can form an esport organization we can you know sit down have a game of counter strike maybe we win maybe we form a jersey maybe we build a website maybe we have a streaming channel 
So now we're just a small esport organization. Maybe we have some friends they can join in. So now we have 10 players. Maybe we can, you know, get a sponsor. We can put their logo on the website or on our social channels. Maybe that will give us $10,000 per year, right? So now we are been running. Maybe we can have a few more friends. Maybe we have 50 players now. Uh, and we have stronger social channels. We have a bigger audience, right? So we can sell tens of 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 those sponsorships. So now we have a hundred thousand dollars in revenue per year, uh, and now we actually have a, like a community, mm, mm, uh, or it could turn into actually become a business. But before we do that, it's it's more of a community, friends playing you know, friends at school or just local local area uh, growing up together, playing together, actually forming some type of uh, of um, of team or organization. So let me dive a little bit into the, uh, the, the educational part. And um, this is just from my experience. You 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 might listen to other presenters uh, who and they they might have other experiences, right? So, this is just for me to just to, to to share my experiences and and please just take what you can and then if it if it sounds weird, just uh, let it be. So, in order to actually build an esport organization in any type of educational institution, I've seen this works in two way. The first first way or, or the, the first way to do this is is the actually let's say it's a university, it's the actual university saying, hey, we want to work with esports. So it might be the management or the president or the, you know, the, the dean or whatever saying, we want to explore this, this esports. How, 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 how can we do this? Um, that's one way to do it. So, it's, so the motivation is internal from the university. And then it, it, the, the, the motivation could be also internal, but it could be driven by students or it could be driven by an external, uh, it could be a company. We see a lot of that in Denmark. We have, we, we have commercial companies contacting schools and educational institution, asking them if they wanna start up esports because they can sell them the service of doing that, right? So, but either way, I mean, first step for me is uh, in, in my logic sense is to, talk to the management to understand what you know have a have a meeting with the school management understand what type of school is this uh which goals do they have what are they trying to do do they have any other tech you know sports or or, or, or tech lines or do they do anything else that could look a little bit like esports or how how do they look at this um so that's the next step right understand how it works what they want uh, and how they do it and from that when you have information about the the, the education uh, or the the school you go back and you kind of reform your idea maybe your idea was to start up an esport program uh, and maybe the school said well that sounds like a good idea and so, you know just build your pitch Build your presentation. Build your 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 pre yeah your your deck, and 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 let's take an, another meeting, and then come 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 show it to us. Um, but you know, understanding the school and how it works and and what why they do what they do uh, helps you build a stronger pitch. <clears throat> you go back to the school and you present this. Um, or oh, and if you're a part of a school, you might be a university, you know, professor or any other teacher anywhere else. And you want to have you, you want to convince your school that they should work with esports in any way. Uh, it's always good to kind of you know talk to the management first to understand how they see this, and see how you can uh, how you can convince them into um, to working with esports if that's what you want. I'm just gonna have a sip of water. Um, so let's next step is to. Present this deck to to the school management, and then obviously begin to work on the program. If they say go and they offer some funds and and you have financials to actually begin to work, then as I see it, it's 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 a way to get started. I've seen this uh, at yeah uh, maybe two hundred schools in Denmark, or know of two hundred schools in Denmark where where 
where where the process has been like this. You know, it, it's either it's either internal from the school itself saying we want to explore this esports. How 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 can we do this? Or it's someone outside saying that that they should do it because there's a lot of sense in in students uh, working with esports. Um, from my point of view, it's always important to build your relations and network of people working in esports. I think that's you know point number one, or one of the most important part is to actually know people who <clears throat> works with esports in a way that you like, more or less. The more you know, the more you can learn and, and the more you can share with others. And then that, that leads me to the next point is understand how you can help others and help others. By helping others, you kind of, you know, it's it's a, I don't know, for me, it's kind of a philosophy to 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 give as much as I can to other people. That way, obviously, I will get something back. But um, more important is that you, the more people I can help, the the more people will work more or less in the same way with esports as I do. So I can, I can. Uh, it's a way for me to get my ideas and my philosophies and my uh, beliefs into, uh, you know, push push them out into the world is by helping others. Um, and it doesn't matter if it's a commercial pro project or if it's a nonprofit project or an educational project. Um, yeah. So this is how I see how educational institutions can, you know, from a from a structural point of view or process point of view can begin to work with eSport. Obviously, you need people who understand the school and the educational system. Um, and you need people who actually know eSports. You know, if you want to have a team of Counter-Strike, you need some coaches, you need some analysts, you might need streaming facilities, you might need gaming facilities. There's a lot of stuff you might need. Um, but that's kind of, you know, that's up to you to figure out what kind of project you want to build. Um, the next uh way is the club way so we already touched upon this uh, and time is running but um how i see this is more or less the same this this obviously differs from wherever you sit around the world right um if it's a sports club if it's a big sports club like really known let's say football club or whatever or if it's a small local more grassroots sports club the the mechanics are the same the motivation can come from inside the club club saying hey we've heard something about gaming and esport maybe we should have a look at that right or it could be from the outside it could be you you know talking to a, 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 any type of club social club sports club whatever golf club i've seen golf clubs you know offering esports basketball clubs uh, I don't know about the sitting still club if they want to, you know, work with esports. But I've seen all types of clubs actually, um, you know, begin to offer gaming or esports activities to attract new members. But it's the same. It's the same process. If if it's you and you want to build an esports organization, the club way can be a smart, um, grassrooty amateur kind of way and not only amateur i've seen a lot of clubs where they are really good uh if you know if they have money you know anything can happen but talking to it's it's the same process talking to the club management to understand what are their values what are they trying to do what kind of audience are they working with what kind of target groups are they working with are they for amateurs or you know grassroots or are they for the pros and the elite you know is there you know do they want to be the, become the best in the world or, or, or do they want to have uh, 10 gamers or 10,000 gamers being part of that club? What, how, how are they looking at things? Um, when you understand that, um, you, can, you can form your pitch, as I already mentioned, or your, your presentation or your idea about an eSport organization. You can build it around the club philosophy so it fits better. And so your presentation become more relevant. Um, and then you can present it to the club, right? And you can begin to work with the club program if they, the club uh, say that it's okay and they want to go that way. If you're already part of a club, and you're thinking about starting esports, 
it's more or less the same process. It's just from from an internal process, from an internal point of view. Um, but you know, clubs, sports clubs, or social clubs, or whatever, and schools are just so different throughout the world, uh, and that's why it's really hard to build a like a, a, a presentation that fits all. But I, I, I'm, I'm sure you understand, you know, the the, the most of it. Um, and I have the same points here: expand your relations and network of people working in in esports. There's a lot of people working with clubs and esports throughout the world, sports clubs youth clubs, um, recreational clubs, um, and, and, and yeah, other clubs as well. Uh, and learning from these guys and, or, and, and girls, uh, makes you become better. Right. And then understand how you can help them understand how you can give something to them. Maybe, um, that, that makes them stronger. Um, I like to write. So I write a lot of articles on my website. I, I, I write and publish books. I spend a lot of money on that. Uh, and, and I'm not selling that, that many books because I, I always you know, hand them out for free uh, at, at many times. So, so it, it's not a, a good business for me that way. But by doing so, I, I kind of spread out my philosophies and my experiences and, and, and the way that I think it should work in esports on a grassroots way to so many people um yeah and then we have the commercial side of stuff uh, and esports um so as of right now i'm i have i receive messages every day from people wanting to to um to build esports organizations from a commercial point of view um so they have they have expenses right they have players, they need salary, so they have expenses. And what I've seen the most is that they have no idea how to actually generate income. No idea. I'm going to touch upon that later. But from a commercial point of view, and in esports, it could be anything, right? You, you, might, want to be, you might want to build a commercial club or an esports center where you have computers and PlayStation and whatever, Xbox in, and people can you know, come in and they can play there and, you know, or you might want to, one might want to build a company, you know, uh, where you might have actually a team competing against other teams. Um, or you might want to build a platform working with esports, like a software platform. <clears throat> so, from my experience, is you know, write down your, your idea and get feedback from experienced business people or business organizations. It doesn't matter where you are in the world. There will always be people, uh, could be local people or could be national people, who wants to, who wants to look at whatever idea you have. Sorry, and and give you feedback. Uh, use social networks, um, and and you know, do quality work. I mean, if you have an idea, write it down. You know, have people look at it. And give you feedback. Most most local communities or, or cities they have organizations. I mean, and and in Denmark we have uh, non-government organ or non-profit organizations where they help initiatives in Africa and all over the world as well. So you might want to use Google and sit down and figure out: Is there any organizations out there who are supporting uh, initiatives? for let's say children in africa <clears throat> i know that's broad right I, I understand that you know africa is big but by by doing so you you will begin to understand that there's a lot of people you can ask and there's a lot of people where you can get feedback on your idea because you want to have a strong idea because in the end you want to you want to and that's my experience that is to actually have one or two people to come on board with you so you're not alone with your project and you are not alone with with that idea if you can if if you can have your idea about evaluated and and have people saying that this is actually a good idea and they can become part of your team um you stand just so much stronger right because we cannot do any you know everything ourselves i'm 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 good at something, but we need 
people who are good at sales or marketing or you know economics or software development or social media or writing or you know we, we need so many different competences when building a strong product or a strong business uh, and that's why i always i always encourage people to um to have one or two to, to become part of that of the business or the project group um and then when you have that built build that business plan from all the feedback you've gotten and from all the ideas from, from the steering group or the project group or, or, or the management team, build that business plan and then execute that business plan. I understand that build a business plan seems quite easy, but it's, um, it's always, um, that's kind of the hard part, right? Uh, and then again, keep on building relations and network of people working with esports in the same areas that you do and understand how you can help others and then help others um right i'm not gonna repeat myself more on that topic and the, the last part is the community part it looks like the three uh, before so i'm just gonna run it through like you know quite fast um it's the same it's the same philosophy write down your idea for community esport organization and that is if you don't want to go to a school or, or an educational institution and if you don't want to go to a club in any way and you want to build, or maybe you already have friends playing and you want to figure out, so how, how can we formalize this? Is there any way that we can take whatever we have with, with a group of friends or, or the community, the online community, and formalize it in any way? Then this could be a way to build an esport organization from a community. Um, so write down the idea, get feedback on your idea from the target group. So understand, you know, who, who do we want to attract to this organization? and then get feedback from them, right? And then again, find one or two people who likes your idea and form that steering group or project group. Uh, build that, it's not a business plan, but it is kind of a business plan. Understand what is it you wanna do with this organization? How are you gonna get there? I'm gonna get into this in you know in just a few seconds. Um, and then build a plan and execute that plan and keep on you know editing it so it becomes better and stronger. Uh, keep on building your relations and the network of people uh, working with esports, and understand how you can help others and help others. Uh, and you can all you can also do that by you know having that esport organization, right? If you if if you're building it and and let's say you have an an esports center, you have a room and you have computers in there and you have internet and games, you can do a lot of help for local kids who loves you know to come play. They might not have money, right? So you had need money from somewhere else. And it's back to, you know, it's back to the steps I was talking about for before by, you know, using a, using Google or whatever search engine and, and start understanding, is there anywhere in the world that actually supports initiatives in Africa? And there is. Uh, how, how can we apply for these funds? How, how can we work with these guys uh, to receive, you know, the funds we need to do whatever we want to do? And then you are able to help others if that's the goal. So this slide is a little bit weird. Uh, it's not weird. It's just um, it's just small. So I hope you can see it. So building the plan, right? Building the plan. It doesn't matter if it's a school or a club or whatever. It, it doesn't matter. So always begin with what is your motivation? What is it you want to do? If you want to build an esport organization and I ask you, why do you want to do that? You need, you need to have an answer ready, right? You need to have an answer ready. Understand your motivation for what you do, why you do what you're doing. Okay? Because that motivation is, is, is what other people will buy into. Okay? So if, if your motivation is, I want to build an esports organization because I want to make a million dollars. You will attract people with the same motivation. Okay, I, I, I want to make a million dollars as well, so I'm going to join your club or I'm going to be part of your management team. Um, and then you will attract the same people working with the same motivation. And the motivation and the ambition is, is really important that you have that in line um, so, no, so you know what you want to do and why you want to do it. And then the next is, what is it you want to build? 
right? Is it a club? Is it a commercial business? It is. Is it a? Is it a an, an esports center? You know, on a local street? Is it an online community? Is it a software platform? What is it you want to do? You need to know that, right? Uh, and you also need to know if it's an if it's an esports organization. You need to know if you want to be the best in the world or best in the country. Which games you want to work with? Um, yeah, what is it you want to do? And then who is your target group? So, and by that I mean if you're building, let's say, an, an, an esports center or, or, or a gaming club, you want to make sure that you understand. Uh, so is it is it local gamers I want to recruit? Is it kids? Is it, is it adults? Are there any schools in the area? So if I'm building an esports center, I can attract the schools and I can get them to pay me a little bit of money to come, you know, borrowing my esport uh, my esports center. Who is your target group? Where is your revenue at? And then the next is which results do you want to create? You want to have a look in, you know, year one, year two, understand when we reach the 30, you know, the first of 2022, first of January uh, 22, which goals do we want to achieve, right? You want to, you want to write that down um, to make sure that you have something to kind of steer at, okay? Um, and then what is your vision? Where do you want to go? So, so the first so so the first goal could be okay so we want to we, we want to build that esports center or whatever esports organization you want to build and we want to have that ready in 12 months okay that could be that could be in result or it could be kind of a goal to have but the vision could be to empower local children to utilize esports uh, to be motivated for school maybe that that could be a vision it's not a goal. I mean, because the vision is uh, is uh, is soft and it's fluent and it can, you know, it can transcend all types of goals. You can do that online. You can do that offline. You can do that in Africa. Or you could do that in Asia or Germany. It doesn't matter where you are. Having a vision is is so strong because it keeps you keeps an eye, uh, keeps you working in the same direction. Next step is having a strategy. So you have a vision. You want to do X, Y, Z. So what's the strategy to actually get there? So the strategy could be to build an esports center. By that, I can attract local children, local schools, local citizens, and I can actually help them. I can do partnerships with local schools or other educational institutions. So I can help the children, you know, become more interested and maybe more happy uh, to learn. And more. And, and if you have a little bit older teenagers, might even work with local companies so they can, you know, have jobs. So that's a, you know, that could be a strategy on how you want to, how you want to actually, um, how you want to make your vision come true. Uh, and then you have tactics. So how are you going to get to your, how are you going to make your strategy come true? Um, how are you actually going to build that? Esports center. You're gonna apply for funds, or you're gonna, you know, meet people with money, or you're gonna take a loan, or you're gonna contact uh, NGOs or whatever. It's for you to understand how you can how you can build tactics. It, it, it's it's the elements that 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 will move you forward, right? So it's the we need we need someone to to do sales, or we we need this and that in marketing. We we need to do this in to recruit one person or I need to speak to this school or I need to speak to this local government or I, I need to talk to this in NGO. That's tactics. That's understanding how you can actually go there. And then we go to the operation part is which actions do you need to take? And you put time on it, right? So the 1st of March or the 1st of April, I need to have contacted or talked to XYZ or my partner or or whoever is in the project group they need to we need to have you know build a website or build a, a social media channels or apply for xyz funds or whatever okay so when i'm talking about this it's because when i receive messages from people they have not done this part okay so being suspect successful is all about having 
all of these details in line so you know what you're doing, you know what you're asking for, and you know what you have to offer, and you know where you're going and how you're going to get there. And it's so crucial building an esport organization, building any type of organizations that you have these th details in line. Um, and then we go into the budget side of it. I mean, this is all, I mean, this, this could be a book on its own, right? But, but obviously you want to understand what kind of team do you need? Do you need one other person or two other persons? Maybe you don't know anything about financial stuff, or maybe you don't, don't know anything about fundraising. So might, you might need someone to actually, to, to who, who knows about fundraising to become part of your team. So building a team. Next is what kind of expenses do you expect in year one, two, and three? Just write it down. You might not know, right? You, you might not know, but you already put down on paper that you want to build an esports center. You want to have, let's say, 10 or 15 or 30 computers. You So you need, you, and it doesn't matter what type of esports organization, you, you will have to write down what kind of expenses do I have year one, year two, year three, to understand what kind of money you need to what kind of revenue you need to make, right? Um, and then we are back at motivation. So that's kind of just a circle for you to understand which steps do I need to take to actually be thorough and do quality work in every step here. Um, my experience from the last five years working with esports is that when I see when 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 I experience a team, a management team working with esports, and they know what they're doing, it will take them six to twelve months to 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 get an esport club or uh, or esport activities in a school up and running. Six to twelve months is is you know, and, and that's in 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 Denmark. Um, um, yeah. So let me just keep on moving. Right. So. I get a lot of, of, of questions about revenue streams. So building building revenues, obviously, let me just see if, uh, wait. Building revenues um, can be so different. Obviously, it depends on what kind of organization you are running. Uh, is it a business? Is it a commercial business? Is it a club? Is it a school? Or are you running something online? Or you know, are you running a gaming center in a local street? Or whatever you're doing so the, the the revenue opportunities will be different right but as i see it almost every, anywhere in the world you have the ability to apply for grants and it can be international national regional or local grants uh and do fundraising uh, i don't know how it is you know in where you're sitting right now, but you need to understand and you need to research this. Um, and if you don't know how to, you need to talk to someone who, who, who does, because that typically could be an opportunity for you to, to attract money this way. Um, right. Depending on your team and depending on obviously the esport organization, but I see esport organization, they make money from from selling advertisements, selling, you know, whatever they have, a, a logo on a jersey or, or a logo in the stream or, or product placements on, on video, you know, I should have had, you know, a few logos here so I could uh, charge someone for watching, right? Um, so when, when, whenever you have a platform and you have an audience, you have the opportunity to make money from ads. I know in the beginning, it's not much. But having that in mind and having that idea just, you know, in the back of your head does make it possible to, 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 to work in this direction. And there's so many others doing that. So it might not be the most beneficial part, but it could be. I did actually with, uh, with one of my friends um, from Ghana uh, and uh, an online FIFA tournament uh, a few years back where we had a lot of Africa's players and a lot of European players uh, playing FIFA against each other online. And, and I, we had Racer and, and a, 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 a company from Switzerland, I believe, offering prizes. Um, and it was fun and just for, for social fun. Um, 
but it had they it it had viewers and the winner actually received the prizes and both Razer and and the Swedish back company um they were happy to be part of it and I mean as a local esport organization you can do that it's not revenue but it's something that maybe in in the future can become part of of having a revenue stream and then we have partnerships um I see a lot of local partnerships so if you have a strong idea and it's founded in in you know it in a local area there will be might be some local businesses who want to support that because you're doing something good for the local community usually local businesses thinks that a good idea uh, it can be companies it can be organization nonprofit it can be schools or universities it could be other uh, and also in in international uh, organization as i mentioned that might be positive about you know supporting you um and then we have the lottery sales depends on where you are in in the world but um a lot of countries have a national lottery and some some of the countries they have where that you actually you have the opportunity to sell lottery tickets uh, and by that you know turning a, a, a percentage of the revenue into your organization um so explore that that could be possible if and if you already have an organization say five or ten players and they can you know sell lottery tickets uh, or any other tickets or, or anything else that's a way to to uh, to generate revenue uh, and then there's a lot of services and i know that's just that might sound stupid but i've seen esport clubs schools esport uh, organizations uh, throughout europe uh, and also in the us where they actually offer us different types of services because if they could generate let's say five hundred dollars or hundred dollars or thousand dollars or five thousand dollars by washing cars why not do it if 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 it takes like you know a hundred dollars to get new jerseys or to to have that computer or to get that new screen or whatever i mean being creative is a it's a really big part of making money right so that could be car wash, cleaning, delivery stuff, constructions, design work, videos, having events. If you have access to computers, you should have events, you know, so people could, you know, pay money to come there and be part of a local tournament or be part of a, a um, whatever uh, activity you can do with that computer. Uh, and could be teaching others as well. Um, and there's a, a lot of crowdfunding opportunities as of now uh, in the year 2021 uh, crowdfunding is possible as long as you have something to offer right you need to offer if i give you money you need to offer me something back um, if it's crowdfunding uh, and then donations make if you have an organization make sure on the website there is an actually opportunity for me to donate money if and 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 when you talk to people or schools or or you know potential partners or whatever you know have that in mind saying we always you know we are open to donations right why not i mean that's 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 a that's a that's a free way to to have the opportunity to have money um and then there's content part that that depends on your skill set right but i've seen it uh, in 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 the the last five years where you have esport organizations um it could be clubs it could be it could be an esports team five people but they know a lot about counter strike so they will contact the local media saying maybe we should write a few articles a week for you guys so we just so you have an esport theme in your newspaper or online or maybe once a month or maybe every day it doesn't matter we can our organization can pr pr provide your local media or national media with esport news right um and that's a way to make money. I've seen this happen. Um, and then you have the content part. I kind of switched that, sorry. But then you have the content part. So that depends on your skill set, but it also depends on your equipment. But I've seen that as well. When you are in esports, some of us, we have an idea about, okay, so we can stream, we can do something with videos, we can do all types of things. Um, we might want to offer that to companies so we could shoot a commercial video we can teach them how to stream you know a, a company can stream in you know the, 
you know, whatever meeting or a party or from their factory or whatever it makes sense doesn't it might not make sense for everyone. But but you know, teaching others and 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 or or creating content for for companies is a way to actually make money because we know how to do it when we're in esports. Um. Yeah, and this next slide is 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 a is a worldwide energy drink sponsor and when i'm looking this way is because i have my on the screen over here and um i'm sure you will have this slide on your email but i i met with this i'm not going to mention the the brand but it's a it's a worldwide energy drink uh, they sponsor a lot of esports stuff right a lot of esports stuff i've met with them a few times and they are actually quite open to sponsor esport organizations. It could be with products, it could be with services, or it could be with money. Uh, they are more open to products and services. Um, what they want to know, if you have an esport organization or a team and you contact them and say, hey, will you be our sponsor? They will know these the answers to these eight questions is, who are you and why are you unique? Right. These guys, they received 100 messages per day from esport people around the world saying, will you be my sponsor? They want to know who you are. Describe who you are as a human being. What are you passionate about? What is your inner motivation? And explain why you, your esport team or your organization is unique. What do you do that no one else is doing? And this is why if we go back to the kind of boring slide a little bit back, where you have to understand who are you? What is it you want to do? Where is it you want to go? What's your mission? You know, what's your vision? What's your strategy? Why are you unique? How will you make money? Who is on your team? They want to know this. So you should know it, right? Before asking anyone for anything, you, should, you need to have this in place. Number two, who is, your, who is your management? Describe your team, your management. What is their passion? What have they achieved before? Why are they unique? And how are you strong together? How do you supplement each other? Saying that if anyone should give you money or products or services or help, they want to they wanna invest in people who are also invested. Number three. What is your vision? Describe what your vision is, which journey you want the potential partner to be part of. What are your dreams and where do you want to go and why? It's difficult to attract a sponsor if you cannot, if you cannot share the dream you have, right? Sponsorships are, they are about money, but they're also about emotions. And they are about you sharing your idea and your dream and your passion. And then the sponsor or the partner or, or the customer saying, I like that. I, and I like you and I like your idea and I like your dream. I, 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 I want to be part of that. Okay. So you need to know that. And then number four, what goals do you have? We've talked about that. What do you do? Okay. So what have you invested in the team yourself? What have you done so far to achieve your visions and your goals, time, money, and resources? It's difficult to go out there and ask for money if you have not done anything yourself. It can be done, and it has been done, but it's easier to say that I've invested a year, I've you know spent a lot of my own money, I've done this and that, and X, Y, Z. So, and right now we are in a place where we are asking, we are we are looking for new partners to take us to the next level. That makes sense. But if I'm just, you know, I have four friends, we're playing Counter-Strike, and I want to ask for $100,000 because we need salary. Maybe not that, you know, that attractive, right? Um, what are the others doing in the, that's number six, what are the others doing in the management team? Uh, describe what they have done. Uh, and then, you know, seven and eight are, are really important. Why are you writing to this sponsor? You need to do this individually. Don't just mass send, copy paste stuff out and then hope for a sponsor to, or, or a customer saying, oh, this sounds amazing. You, it needs to be individual, right? Explain why you write to this um, XYZ sponsor as a potential partner rather than anyone else saying, 
I'm writing to Nike because I love Nike. I've seen you have done this and that in, in esports, and I really believe, and I know this guy, and I've seen you do this locally, and I your your brand just supports whatever we are doing. So I'm writing to Nike. I'm not writing to add you know Adidas or Puma or anywhere anyone else. I'm writing to Nike because I want Nike, and they might say no, right? Or they might say yes. Doesn't matter. But you have invested your whole heart, your vision, your dream, your passion, your power, your money into that. You want Nike, right? You begin to feel that. So if you don't feel that power and that inner fire, you know, asking a partner for partnerships, they won't feel it. So you're just going to be one in a thousand asking for a partnership. So you need to understand why you're writing to that. And then number eight, how they can contribute. Uh, so it, you might ask for money, but, you know, have some in, some intelligence idea or about why are you writing to this partner or sponsor or school or company? Uh, how can they contribute? Is it money? Is it computers? Is it, you know, travel arrangements? Is it what, how can they contribute? Right. The next is kind of my slogan um, is always be working, always be creative, always be networking. Um, I think these three lines are kind of important for the way that I work. Uh, obviously, I have a family, I have children, and I have a wife, so I'm I'm not always working, but I'm but in my mind, and I always have a notebook where I write down ideas. I wake up more or less an hour before anyone else in the house, so I wake up, I have my coffee, I write down my my ideas. So whenever the kids are ready and go to school, and 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 my day begins. You know, I've already been actually working for a few hours. So always be working, always be creative, and always be networking. And uh, next part, and um, time is running right now. So sorry about that. But the next part is a bit different. So we've talked about how you can create and fund and work with esports and create an esports organization. And now I'm going to show you about the science. I'm going to show you what science says about which cognitive, social, and personal development people I've written youth, but it's actually just human being can experience when becoming part of a local esports organization. So let's imagine you have esports in school. You might have it all on esports center. You might have 10 computers or 15 or 20 or five. Doesn't matter. You might have a coach, like a grown up man or woman saying, welcome. Today we're going to play FIFA. This is this is the tournament. Come in. You're not going to yell at each other. You're going to behave right, right? We're going to turn show up on time. We're going to we're going to behave. We're going to you know shake hands. We're going to we're going to show sportsmanship. Um, and from I've spent three years, uh, you know, investigating this, and we have signs actually on that. Um, We have science science showing that uh, when you do esports in a, in an organized way in a healthy environment with grown up people to be coaches or instructors or teachers, you will have the gamers. Let's say they are between eight and doesn't matter twenty five years. Uh, so you have from children to teenagers to actually adults. You will see them. If they come in the esports center a few times a week and they have a coach or an adult help, helping them, they become part of a team uh, and they actually, you know, they feel themselves as part of a team. You will see them developing their commitment. They will build self-worth and self-confidence and persistence and friendships. And, and that's Ryan and Desi, that's the self-determination theory. You can Google that afterwards, right? Then you have uh, Michael Unger. He's a PhD. He's been working with resilience uh, for many years. Is saying that if you can, there's a few resources that you need to have in place. Esports can do that. And then you see people develop self-confidence, self-worth, identity, resistance, and friendships, right? We have a Danish scientist or a Danish uh, social worker. Thank you, Brian. I really love your support. Uh, we have a Danish um, scientist saying that 
esports in uh, not esports but activities in uh, in in the same framework as esports I, as I just mentioned can build social skills friendships self worth and identity um and then uh, we have seen I've seen that in Denmark and I also seen that other other countries and where, as well is that gamers actually develop different skill sets than other people. They get a spatial understanding. They're good at multitasking. They're, they are persistent. They are good at problem solving and they're good at, they, they will have social development and they will have pro-social behavior. Not everyone, I understand that, but some, uh, and a lot of gamers have, uh, especially those who are on a team. Okay, so that's kind of a, a, a need to know here. Um, and especially if you are three or four or five people, you know, playing Overwatch, playing Rocket League, playing Counter Strike, League of Legends, or Dota, or any of these games, you will you have and and you if you play them in an organized esport organization in healthy environment and in a healthy environment, I mean, uh, with the supervision of adult or coaches or people who are influencing you in a positive way, saying we are going to behave like this, you know, we are we are yeah. Uh, that that's the healthy uh, <clears throat> environment. Um, we have the Danish maritime business, so that's shipping, that's uh, oil platforms, that's uh, Maersk, the big uh, container ship business. They recruit gamers because gamers have the ability to multitask, the ability to to think strategically, uh, to to change attention without losing focus. That's the multitasking. Um, uh, good reaction ability, good making, good at making decisions, and and good uh, have the ability to collaborate, and good at coordinating and and maintaining over you. So we actually have campaigns in Denmark to uh, to attract gamers to these educations and to these jobs. We also see that the armed forces in Denmark are actively recruiting gamers, uh, more or less, because of the same skill set. Uh, they have spatial intelligence, they have strategic sense, they have quick reactions, they're good to work with, they're good at dealing with complex pictures of reality and, and able to maneuver quickly in it, and um, and also uh, make a series of momentation decisions without uh, about what is important uh, and what is not. So that's about making decisions really fast. Um, so what I'm trying to say is, if you're a gamer and you might have played Counter-Strike or any other, you know, um any other team based and i think it, it needs to be a team based game you have to develop a special skill set so you're actually able to get a job or an education um or at least you are able to go investigate hey maybe i'm good at something right maybe i'm really good at something um yeah this is the picture of a Danish uh, armed forces in uh, in flight control, where they are recruiting gamers. Other areas of uh, other work areas could be if you're interested in working with esports, could be as a player, as a coach, as a teacher, as a performance coach, could be a psychologist, could be behavior nutrition, could be software developer, could be game designer, sound designer, graphical designer, photograph and video stuff. Um, it could be if you're good at sales. I mean, if you're good at sales, you can get a job anywhere, right? Um, marketing, it could be power, uh, electricity, IT. Yeah, exactly, Brian. Gamers are going to rule the world. Uh, it could be event management. It could be as a consultant for federations, organizations, schools, associations, schools again, uh, or governments. It could be a streamer. Right. If you uh, you might be you might have something to tell to share with other people. Uh, I've seen a lot of streamers make a lot of money uh, from content I don't understand. So I think anything is possible. You might like to write. Right. You might be a journalist. There's a lot of international or online or remote jobs in esports right now. Uh, obviously, if you know economics and you know laws and legal, you are in a good way. Um, and it could be in politics as well. So I think key to work with esports, it could be build your own organization or, you know, whatever passion you have, or it could actually, you know, be getting a job working with esports or games in, 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 in a way that motivates you is to 
test your passion. Understand where, where, what's my passion? You know, what, what, what am I? I, I always say that you have, whenever you feel the time is disappearing, that's where your passion is. It could be drawing, it could be running, it could be about music, it could be about designing a website, it could be about you know playing a game. I think most of us understand the feeling that when we are playing a game, the time is disappearing, right? But it's not about the game. It it, it might be about the, the creativity, you know. So whenever you know, just be aware of that. Whenever time is disappearing for you and you feel yourself. Uh, you know, in in the zone when you're f- completely focused, that's where your passion is, and usually that's where your talent is as well. Um, and then number three, it 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 might fit better into Denmark. I don't know, but volunteer work is just a good way to get experience and to get to know people. Uh, number four, create networks. I mean, get to know a lot of people and make them like you, or at least understand who you are and what you do. And then create value for others. If you know what you're good at and you are working with your talent and you're creating value for other people and they get to know you, then you are good to go, right? You're good to go. So that was my presentation. I don't think I have anything else to share or I have a lot of other stuff to share. But I'm not going to do it. I've been here for an hour, and um, this is my contact details. And um, I understand that you uh, might be able to see this again. So, um, so you can do that. If there's anything else you need, you can always just reach out to me, uh, send me an email, and I can send you the slide deck, or I can send you more information about you know any of the steps if you have any questions about that. And yeah. Um, you have the ability to write questions in the chat if you want to. Just do that. Um, yeah, I think that's it.